Welcome everyone to the City Council meeting for Monday, October 23rd, 6 p.m. If we could have a roll call to establish quorum, please, ma'am. Peg Adamson. Here. Terry McClung. I am here. Christy Kendrick. Here. Bob Thomas. Here. Vicki Schneider. I'm here, too. David Mitchell. Here. We have six. All right. We'd stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If I can get a motion to approve the agenda. So, so, so go ahead. So moved. Second. <laughs> okay. Any additions, corrections? Yes, ma'am. Um, I don't see it on here, but is there something about the community center? <coughs> Uh, as a place to be in, uh, I and guess we could talk about it, number four. It's it's uh, it's part of that. Well, it's not really. I mean, we haven't gotten anything finalized on the community center. I haven't talked to, him, gotten anything. No, ma'am. <laughs> well, <laughs> so there's nothing to discuss about the community no, center. All right. Uh, <clears throat> and then we'll be able. To, okay, never mind. Thanks. Any other? If not, uh, all those in favor of approving the agenda as uh, submitted, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? So moved. Get a motion to approve the minutes. So moved. Get a second? Second. Any additions, corrections? If not, all those in favor of the minutes uh, as submitted, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstain. All right, one abstention. All right, that brings us to uh, commission uh, authority reports. We've got uh, Melissa's here for planning commission. Come on up here. Step right on up. All right, we had another rousing year at planning. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, our goals this year were to study emergency vehicle access to streets, re-examine the 1996 vision plan, address the declining population problem, study establishing a light industrial zone, and participate in statewide planning training, training offered. We met three of those goals and are still working on them. <clears throat> Most of the year, as you know, was devoted to redoing the codes for B&Bs and the definitions, and we spent about six months on that. We're still working on something for events and hope to have that done. And Glenna today submitted our final thing for y'all on all the codes and code revisions and definitions. Um, we were also working on PUDs, and that's in that that where we're going to do neighbor notifications. Um, we had many applications for new construction, cups, one rezone, and several setback variances. We're starting to work on the subdivisions and low impact development. Uh, let's see. I think that looks pretty good. Any questions? I've got uh, one, I, and you may have done this for me. We were just talking about this earlier. Um, does the, I think the Planning Commission, we talked about street striping. Yes, I was supposed to ask you about on, that tonight. And I was going to say, have y'all submitted, do y'all have a recommendation? Yes, I, I thought we did recommend to y'all to, that we recommend that Spring Street be striped. And then we will, if you so ask us, we will work on other streets. But I didn't get a recommendation, I don't think. Okay. How, what part of Spring Street? How far? Um, the Planning Commission really wanted to go from probably around the post office all the way up to Harmon Park. Mm -hmm. Okay. It was Crescent Spring to Harmon Park. Okay, Crescent Spring. Okay. Oh, well, that's not. Yeah, yeah I thought they. I thought the they had. Planning said from the library to, to, to there. <laughs> well, then that would well, that's Crescent to Spring. The, the other okay. The okay. Yeah, I, okay. So, Crescent Spring to Grotto? Yeah, that that sounds good. Is I don't think. Right? I don't. I said Harmon Park is what but yeah. if we go up to Harmon Park, there I, I've that, never that seen Harman any Park problem. There isn't anything. There's really I've never seen a problem there. Maybe if they have an event or something. I mean, I There's think no past. Place to park. Yeah, there isn't it because of the curves and everything mm -hmm. else. Yeah. Okay. Grotto would Spring would be about the end of the 
Well, of it's, the area. it's gray up past Dairy Hollow. It's it's parking past that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but All right. Well, that's what uh, okay. what I want to find out because I, I was kind of waiting. Just I hadn't okay. gotten anything from the uh, planning. So okay, we we thought we'd given it to you. I okay. Mean, well, okay. we'll go ahead and see what we can get going on. Okay. Up All right. That's it. Oh, thank you. All right. Oops. I have one right. question. One more question. Is this your final recommendation to the yes, council? Yes, and, and I do want to bring them up. Christy did send us some revisions, and I think Glenna noted them in there. And so when it's, it's noted in there, Christy, I don't think she put them in. But that would be for y'all when you decide if you like it, you're going to pass it, going to send it back to us. But you would discuss them then. So Glenna has. The final. You have it. I think she this gave, is she gave in it to your packet. Today. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, in yeah. your packet, it should be. Um, yeah. Not planning all. commission's recommendation. Right. If you have any questions or want to send it back to us, just let us know. Oh, okay. But I wasn't at the last workshop, and there were some changes in verbiage that Glenna took care of. Okay. Thank you. All right. Well, um, Not been no further questions for Melissa. Uh, I think our next person is the fire department. For their fire chief. Hello, hello, Mayor, hello. Council. Hello. Thanks for having us. It's been a, a, a fairly productive year. Uh, we've managed to keep our budget in the black all year, which I'm pretty proud of. Um, we're uh, working hard to, to keep that budget where it needs to be, uh, watching our spending and, and making sure that things are still being met. So uh, morale is high at the fire department. I'm not getting, you know, they always tell the chief that morale is high. They're not going to complain to me, but if you talk to any of the firemen, you'll find that... Uh, they're they're enjoying themselves. They keep coming back. I've not lost any full-time career members this year, so uh, that that speaks volumes as far as I'm concerned. We uh, this year we changed our billing company, and that was quite an undertaking. It took uh, uh, quite a while to get Medicare uh, to <coughs> finalize all the documentation and uh, for us to start. <laughs> collecting reimbursement from Medicare uh, after a few phone calls to uh, a certain senator's office uh, within two days we had a designated Medicare representative and within a few weeks we started getting uh, all of our Medicare reimbursements so uh, that, that was a, a huge undertaking um, Chief Pettis and, and uh, myself put quite a few hours in on getting that taken care of so um, we hosted our EMS conference as we had the past few years, five years. Um, we're planning on doing that again in the spring. Uh, we've completed uh, monthly fire training. We have a fire meeting the first Wednesday of each month. The second or third Wednesday of each month is training. It's strictly training. Uh, and these guys are dedicated and they keep coming time and time again and let us make them sweat and work. and and prepare so we don't have any more uh, injuries or accidents. Um, we've had several significant fires in the, in the city and out in the county and we've had uh, quick aggressive knockdowns and have saved some structures. Uh, some some uh, nice commercial structures in town that had we not had such a, a quick early knockdown uh, could have been catastrophic. So um, our call volume as of today, we're at 1,175 ambulance calls so far. Um, and on this day last year, we were at 1,095. So we're about 80-ish 80, 80 calls over. And uh, we're at 92 fire-related calls, and that uh, includes hazardous material calls, uh, pull stations, fire alarms, uh, false alarms, that sort of thing. So it's been a good busy year. So... Any questions? Yes, sir. Compliment you on the new billing system. I think that was a, a, an excellent choice. And then the collection system, though, I'm still a little concerned about, to be perfectly honest. Gotcha. 
the, your billing company is, is taking a six month period of time to work the bills. And after about three months, pretty much, Medicare, Medicaid is pretty well paid. Commercial mm -hmm. insurance is probably paid if you get it in on time. So that leaves that extra three months to kind of work on, on self-pace or, or no insurance pays. So they're actually kind of holding up for about three months before it goes Going really to collection. collections. Correct. And then in looking on your collection report, now there's getting to be a fair number of people out there six months out. So now we're nine months out from the time of service out. And they had said when you were looking at that collection agency, they were going to be real aggressive. Do you are you getting reports from them that they really are working those accounts? They are working the, the aged accounts. They're 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 working the accounts that were two years prior to well, 2017, yeah. and then anything three months out, yeah. and then you're, you're added three months that they're working for self-pays and working arrangements with people. So they're you, sending them to collections after that. So if you identify, because there was a fair number of them that this, up to that point, they Correct. were over $1,000 bills Correct. that they should have had. And Arkansas being a garnishment state, they surely should be able to, to attach or do something. Yeah, and there, there are some that are being taken to court for they, that. They are doing so, it, so correct. they are telling you that. Good. Correct. Glad to hear that. Thank yeah. you. And, and there, there was a report that you requested some time ago about zone breakdown, credit, and I'd like receivable. To, I'd like to see where the... I got it today. Did you? Yeah, yes. I really like so I'll be happy to bring that to department head meeting tomorrow and email it to you e email and let, it you, to me too. let yeah. you distribute it. So. I'd like to see where the bad debt's coming out of. Correct. I, chances are I don't think it's Holiday Island because of the age group out there. Is on yeah, and they're very well insured. That's what I thought. You bet. We did have a breakdown. I noticed on the last one that I sent the... Uh, yeah. The yeah, the breakdown of the runs. runs. Uh, yeah, where which is the, good. Yeah, it's so we could equal. see. I'm surprised that Holiday Island and Eureka Springs runs are pretty close to the same. Yeah. The yeah. The charges and credits are, there's a significant difference between the charges and credits in the Eureka Springs and the Holiday Island area. Mm -hmm. so. Now, also, if I'm not mistaken, the last uh, agency that we had had a problem with not following through with anything that was under a thousand dollars correct and this agency is willing to pursue uh, whatever we tell them to pursue yeah and that's nice to know that they're really doing it yeah because I don't remember how much how many thousands of dollars but it, it ended up being quite a few over a period of five years it was significant so yeah sir was that uh, Senator Favis that helped you with the with the Medicare problem? Senator Bozeman's office. Senator Bozeman's office. Yes, sir. Oh, okay. Yes, sir. All so right. Go to the but have we, we did we send him a letter or Absolutely. something? Absolutely. I thanked him personally last week. Okay. So. I followed up with a letter. I yes, think sir. That would be a good thing. Yes, ma'am. Thanks for the report. And I was going to ask, too, about the who was that senator yeah. because yeah. They need to be helping you out. They they were an immense help. Oh, that's they got, good. They got the ball rolling. Oh, that's good. Um, and this, I'm just asking this question because I'm a woman, and I'm wondering if you have, when people want to come and work at the fire department as firefighters, uh, do you actively look into um, women firefighters or Hispanic or I mean, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. There's and no do you have any female no, firefighters? We, we do. Um, you do? Okay. Yes. And EMTs? Nikki okay. Trahan's been an EMT and a firefighter okay. with us for many years. Okay. Um, she recently moved to Bentonville. Oh. Um, when I first started in 96, Ann Makovic was a paramedic okay. here. Um, we've had a handful of female okay. uh, firefighter paramedics, EMTs, over the years. Awesome. Um, mm -hmm. No discrimination at Eureka Fire No, I just department. was wondering if, if there was a... A policy of actively looking if somebody is if you have an open position I have them come in I have a part-time application on my desk right now that I'll be interviewing later okay so awesome thank you yeah <laughs> anyone else thank you Nick thank you guys Appreciate it. thank yes, you be safe Bye, thank you all right well that brings us to uh, public comments uh, Jay you got three minutes Good evening. Uh, my name is Jay Wilkes. I'm one of the organizers of Out in Eureka, uh, who are we're putting on the uh, some, the Fall Diversity Festival, October, uh, November 4th, 5th, and 6th. Um, I'd like to talk to you about some events we have coming up. One of the special events we have 
we have been able to secure the Netflix documentary, The Death and Life of Martha P. Johnson. Uh, we will be the fourth city in the United States to show this movie in a public venue with a, with a panel. Uh, we're after Seattle International Film Festival, Tribeca, Sundance, and now Eureka Springs. Uh, this is a very big deal for Eureka. Um, the, the movie, out, uh, the, the Death and Life of Martha P. Johnson, is directed by film producer David France. And he goes back and re-examines the, from 1969 until the current investigation of Martha P. Johnson's death. Martha P. Johnson was a transgender LGBT activist in the 60s. And in uh, 1969, she is one of the uh, leaders, one of the persons that kicked off the Stonewall riots in New York City. In 1992, her body was found floating in the Hudson River. And it's been ruled as a suicide, but David, Mr. France, has gone back in to look at that, the cause of death, going and interviewing her, her friends, all the, uh, all of the investigators up to the, up to the point of the release of the documentary. So this will be coming to Eureka Springs. Uh, we'll be an up upstairs at the Grotto on Saturday, November 4th. The meet and greet starts at 2.30. The documentary will start at 3. Immediately following the documentary, there will be a discussion panel and questions. We'll be gathering information and questions back from the audience that will be uh, returned to um, Netflix uh, for, their, for their data. And so it is free to the public. Uh, there will be uh, food and beverage available per for purchase and is open to all ages. So it's very important that we take, especially with Eureka Springs, we, we stop and we, we look at this movie and, and look at the, what it's going to bring to Eureka Springs. More, a little bit more, a little bit more knowledge. And we're going to be the only ones in this part of the country to have the showing of this movie. So thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. And thank if you would you. like to have, have a schedule and the press release, copy of the press release, if anybody would like that as well. We can pass it down, Jay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I think that concludes the um, public comments. Uh, I did pass by uh, one of the applicants um, that you have uh, in your packet, uh, Lever Murphy, for the hospital. Oh. Uh, submit an application to uh, be on the hospital commission. I think y'all have her application in your packet there. Yeah, so. well, do we? So mm. yeah, we got it yeah. last. Got it last, last week. Yeah. So yeah, all right. So we need a. If we can get a vote on that or an, a motion to approve, Mr. McClellan. I'd like to make a motion to approve the Murphy. And I'll second uh, the Murphy part. <laughs> okay. And we got a second? I did it. Okay. Any discussion? All those in favor, sing five, saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Thank you all very much. Um, all right. First uh, un unfinished business, we have Joe Gunnels uh, ask uh, to have his, the group tour uh, franchise discussion postponed until November 13th. So I'll bring it up to the ordinance to update the code for district court. Get a motion. Bless you. To discuss and. Get a motion to discuss. Second. All right. Uh, this, is yeah, this is our ordinance um, amending. I mean, basically uh, going through the qualifications and, and changing our our uh, uh, code book to reflect the uh, new requirements for the district court judge. So, if there's any questions? Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir. Probably not. Just say Mr. Mayor. Yeah, okay. that'd work. That's, that's hey, you. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, I'd like to make a motion that we uh, read this, uh, sign, sign this ordinance a number and read it for Put it on his first reading for Can we clarify which ordinance we're talking about since there's several in our UB2? Yeah. UB2, yes. okay. There are two okay. ordinances and we got to put yep. both of them I'm in the seating. Yep. Okay. Second. All right. It's very faint. 
Okay. UB2. Okay. Okay. So, so that's the ordinance amending Title II, Section 5.52 regarding district court judge. Yes. Okay. Uh, voice. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Okay. 5 1. The ordinance number will be 2260. An ordinance amending Title II, Section 0 .52 regarding the district court judge, whereas the City Council of the City of Eureka Springs desires to amend the municipal code to reflect the current state law. Now, therefore, be it ordained by the City Council of the City of Eureka Springs that Chapter 2 of the Municipal Code <coughs> be amended as follows. Section 1. The following subsection shall be removed from the Municipal Code in their entirety as follows. A. 2.52.03 Qualifications of Judge B. 2.52.05 Salary and C. 2.52.07 Expenses Section 2. All provisions of the ordinances of the City of Eureka Springs in conflict with the provisions of this ordinance are and the same are hereby repealed and all other provisions of the ordinances of the City of Eureka Springs not in conflict with the provisions of this ordinance shall remain in full force and effect. Section 3. Severability. Should any sentence, paragraph, clause, phrase, or section of this ordinance be adjudged or held to be unconstitutional, illegal, or invalid, the same shall not affect the validity of this ordinance as a whole or any part or provision thereof other than the part so decided to be invalid, illegal, or unconstitutional and shall not affect the validity of the Eureka Springs Municipal Code as a whole. Mr. McClellan? I'd like to make a motion that we approve Ordinance 2260 on our first reading. Second. Okay. Motion is second. Any discussion? <coughs> All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? No. 5-1, pass. Mr. McClellan? Mr. Mayor, I'd like to suspend the rules and uh, and uh, read ordinance number 2260 by title only. Second. Okay, we motion. Second, second. Any discussion? Roll call. Bob Thomas? Yes. Chrissy Kendrick? Yes. David Mitchell? Yes. Terry McClung? Uh, yes. Hey Adamson? No. Peggy Schneider? Yes. <coughs> Five one. Okay. Ordinance number 2260, an ordinance amending Title II, Section 0 .52 regarding the District Court Judge. Mr. McClellan? Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion that we approve ordinance number 2260 on its second reading. Second. Any discussion? This is okay. All those in favor, saying aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Five <coughs> one. Mr. Mayor? Yes, sir. I'd like to make a motion that we suspend the rules and read ordinance number 2260 by title only for his third reading. Second. Any discussion? Okay. Terry McClellan? Yes. Christy Kendrick? Yes. Peg Adamson? No. Bob Thomas? Yes. Vicki Schneider? Yes. David Mitchell? Yes. 5-1. Okay. Ordinance number 2260, an ordinance amending Title II, Section 0 .52 regarding the District Court Judge. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion that we approve Ordinance number 2260 on its third reading. Second. Any further discussion? Okay. <coughs> being none. Peg Adamson? No. Vicki Schneider? Yes. Christy Kendrick? Yes. Terry McClellan? Yes. David Mitchell? Yes. Bob Thomas? Yes. 5 1. All right. Thank you all. Uh, our next item is the uh, ordinance uh, for annual payment uh, of proportionate share of the district court judge's salary. Motion to discuss. Second. All right, this is the ordinance that uh, allocates uh, the shares of the uh, judge's uh, salary. Uh, Eureka Springs basically ends up paying one share out of, I believe, eight shares. Uh, 
So if there's any further discussion. I'd like to make a motion that Two we shares. assign this ordinance a number Two and read it for its first uh, passage. Second. Any discussion? Yes, ma'am. I thought we were going to talk about this one or did something with this one. What am I thinking of? We talked about uh, writing this up as an ordinance last at the last oh, meeting. Oh, okay. 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 Any further discussion? All those in favor, passage of uh, assigning this an ordinance number. Uh, Sing for us saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Let's no. I have one. The ordinance number will be 2261. An ordinance authorizing the mayor of the city of Eureka Springs, Arkansas, to execute an annual proportionate rate excuse me, proportionate share agreement for the state district court judgeship base salary. Whereas the state requires a written proportionate share agreement to fund one half of the base salary of the district court judgeship. Now therefore be it ordained by the city council of the city of Eureka Springs, Arkansas that the mayor of Eureka Springs, Arkansas is hereby authorized to execute a yearly written proportionate share agreement to fund one half that is 50% of the base salary of the district court judgeship for each new fiscal year after fiscal year 2018. The remaining base salary of the district court judgeship shall be paid by the state. The proportionate share agreement is divided among the following entities. Carroll County, two shares. Madison County, one share. City of Berryville, one share. City of Eureka Springs, one share. I was mistaken. City of Huntsville, one share. And City of Green Forest, one share. Mr. McClung. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to uh, uh, make a motion that we pass ordinance no t number 2261 on this first reading. <coughs> Second. Any further discussion? I have one question. Yes, Does this have to be done every year after this? No, that's as, a, as an ordinance. That's the purpose to stop it. For, we had to pass it as a resolution each time when it passed. So this this will eliminate. This that. Will I eliminate just wanted to that verify part. that. And yes, sure. Okay, that's all. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Uh, the first line after where, the first line of whereas and should be the state requires a yearly written. You left out yearly. And I think you said we had to have that right, or it would be screwed up. Where are you? Right. The first line of whereas. You didn't read that. Is that what you're saying? She didn't read it. Didn't say yearly. She said requires a written. Thank you. You're okay. It is yearly written. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor, sing by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Five one. Mr. McClellan? Mr. Mayor, I'd like to spin the rules and read ordinance number 2261 by title only for its second reading. Second. Any further discussion? There being none. Ms. Schneider? Yes. Ms. Mistrio? Yes. Mr. McClung? Yes. Ms. Adamson? No. Mr. Thomas? Yes. Ms. Kendrick? Yes. 5-1? Okay. Mr. McClung? I'd like to make a motion that we approve ordinance number 2261 on a second reading. Second. By title. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion? We read it by title. Has there been none? Mr. Boyce? All those in favor, signify five by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Okay, 5 did, 1. Did we do that right? <laughs> yep. Yeah. We need to read the title. You're right. You're right. Thank you. Okay, we'll forget. Eagle Ears. Eagle, yep. Number 2261, an ordinance authorizing the mayor of the city of Eureka Springs, Arkansas, to execute an annual proportionate share agreement for the state district court judgeship base salary. All right, now then, uh, call for a vote. All those in favor of uh, passage of 2261 on the second reading signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Still 5 1.
Okay. Mr. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion that we suspend the rules <laughs> and read ordinance number 2261 by title only. <coughs> third reading. Second. Sorry. Okay, any discussion? Mr. Thomas? Yes. Mr. McClellan? Yes. Ms. Schneider? Yes. Ms. Adamson? No. Mr. Mitchell? Yes. Ms. Kendrick? Yes. 5 1. Did you read Ordinance it? number 2261. <laughs> An ordinance authorizing the mayor of the city of Eureka Springs, Arkansas. <coughs> And yes, the typo in the first line will be corrected. To execute an annual proportionate share agreement for the state district court judgeship base salary. Okay. I'd like to make a motion that we approve this ordinance number 2261 on its third and final reading. Second. Any further discussion? There being none, we shall have a roll call. Ms. Kendrick? Yes. Ms. Adamson? No. Mr. Thomas? Yes. Ms. Schneider? Yes. Mr. McClung? Yes. Mr. Mitchell? Yes. Five, one. Okay. Thank you all. Um, okay. That brings us up to our next order of business. It's an update on the North's lease and the AG's opinion uh, regarding property. Motion to discuss. Second. Um, first of all, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll do the simple one yeah, first. Um, I haven't received anything from the Attorney General uh, regarding the lease uh, or the opinion rather. I did uh, have a conversation with the uh, Attorney General last week. We were at a meeting together and I asked her about uh, sending her a, uh, a request uh, for her opinion and she said to uh, send her an email and she would see where that request was at. Um, but that was on Wednesday and I haven't heard back from her so I don't know where that's we're still waiting to hear anything on the, the Attorney General's opinion on what can be done with school property. Uh, update on the Norris lease uh, I sent a copy of course to the lease to uh, uh, over to Don Allen uh, law firm and I think y'all have a copy of her letter back in your file I don't know if you've had a chance to read that or not. So Nick, can we read it? We beg your pardon. May we? May we? May we have it read out loud? I, we can read it out loud. In just a moment. Uh, I, Nikki, you got it. I don't think we need to read it out loud. Um, okay, my understanding from our discussion was nobody could find the lease. Not the doctor. Not the hospital. Not the city. Not the nobody. So how can they be sitting there constantly in the letter talking about the lease and what was supposed to be done and paid and this and that and they're going on and on about lease info and then they show us this ordinance. Now I, I submitted the ordinance. I gave you the ordinance. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I'm, I'm assuming so the lease is. And that's all we have. There's just the lease orders. is what what I had sent <coughs> over to Don Allen for the doctor. Well, they were they're referencing his original lease, but nobody has a copy or can find one. Has a lease with the hospital. So how can they be referencing his old lease when nobody apparently has been able to find one? Well, I just received this today. Okay. So I don't know. According to when I talked to uh, Don Allen last week or week before last, uh, she wasn't, didn't have a copy of that lease. Now, see, Miss Beard's here. Do you do you know? Do y'all have a copy of the lease, the old lease? You do. Okay. We have not seen a copy of that. Everybody said they haven't been able to find the original. I, talk, I understood that that. Uh, Marlene had a copy of that? I hadn't gotten a copy of that completed yet, so... I don't know. I, I heard in minutes of her, I heard in meeting last time that there was no lease, but that was not accurate. So do you, we have, y'all have a copy? Can you come up to the microphone, please, ma'am? I'd rather not. Uh, okay, well, I make a motion that we delay this until we can get a copy of the lease and go from that point. 
Well, that's an old lease. I mean, that's so a reference, and we can't do a new thing without looking at the old thing. Since it is now apparently available, we need to be able to compare old with new and so on and so forth so we can see what's gone on for the last 30 years. Mr. Weaver? It probably does behoove this body, if they are going to be the one acting on the lease, to see what prior leases might have stated. Okay. So we got a motion. I got a motion to defer. Is there a second? I'll second it for the sake of discussion. Yeah. Well, now we got it. We're going to be discussing I, deferring it. Yes. Okay. And I was going to say I think what the lease provided is irrelevant since the lease was made with the hospital commission who did not have the authority to enter into this lease. Okay. And, and generally, in any case, what something sold for yesterday isn't what it is worth today. So I suggest that we enter into a, a, a market, a, a lease that's based on market values and terms right now, not what was true 20 years ago. David? As this is going to mention, I would assume at this point that it's going to be an attorney, attorney type of thing going on to get a copy of this lease unless Mrs. Beard is going to provide a copy to our attorney. Which, uh, I guess our attorney, attorney would. Our attorney would provide this. Thank you. The reason, uh, Ms. Kendrick, that I suggest that you would obtain the lease was that three members at the last meeting, I believe three members of this body, referred to the fact that they would like to know how the last lease was complied with and whether or not that was a valid lease, whether or not it was with the proper authority, if the terms were not followed or the terms were followed, may be of interest with this body before it would enter into a lease with the same party on the other side. Now, in reference, Mickey, to your question about uh, this ordinance that I attached, 935, mm -hmm. I submitted that because uh, Ms. Allen referenced it um, in her letter of uh, ordinance 935 dated May 4th. So I submitted that to the council for their consideration. Okay, so you. you'd know what that's about. Okay. All right, so there's, you have a Go question ahead. about? Well, I have a question about something I want to say, but it's not about deferring this. Once we defer it, that's it. Okay. Are you well, it's I, not about it's not about deferring I, it. I wanted to I wanted to talk about the characterization of Dr. Beard in all of these discussions. Well, at this point, it's got nothing to do. We're, we're well, the motion we, is to defer this. Right, because we have this letter, and I just feel that he has been misrepresented in our dealings about this house, and I wanted to correct those. Things. I wanted to say something in favor of Dr. Beard and his tenure there. But if that's not part of this discussion, I will close my mouth. At, at this point, the, the motion is to table this yeah. until the next meeting. All right. So, any further until discussion? Until the copy of the lease is obtained. Until the copy of the lease is obtained, you're correct. Which is hopefully by the next meeting. So, any further discussion on this motion to defer? If not, all those in favor, sing five by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. We will defer this into our next meeting. Mr. McClellan? Yeah. Uh, uh, in regards to the uh, the uh, the Attorney General's opinion, yes, sir. have you had any further discussions with the school board, the superintendent, or anyone as to their consideration? into what we have in mind about you know if, if they would if they would give it to the city donate the property to the city I think it's still it seems positive if if the attorney general feels that we can it hasn't do that. been placed on the school board agenda no, or no. not until we find out for sure that it can be done the, the superintendent wouldn't didn't want to do submitted to the school board yet He's still under the impression it can't be done. That it cannot? That it cannot be given to the city without... The superintendent it. believes that it cannot. Correct. But so he was in favor of giving it to the city. Was he... Yes. Well... Superintendent. You know, I... 
apparently now, somebody somebody had to have been in order to for well, this even the be school, a possibility. Remember the school board was was interested in that, Mr. McClung, and I'm trying to think. I don't think the superintendent was against it. He just didn't feel that they could do it. I see. <laughs> Legally. I mean, I think, and that's where my, when you ask me that, that's the reason I'm hesitant to say he's in favor of it. I don't remember him saying, no, I'm not in favor of this. Well, I certainly, you know, just for a point of discussion for them, I think it would be who of us or someone to maybe have the school board put it on their Agenda, because I mean, we're you know we're trying to move quickly here, not slowly, or at least quicker. So if uh, if it was, you know, the the one of one of the other will come first, whether it be the attorney general or the school board, and the school board could make it, you know, with the caveat that the attorney general says we can do it. So why not press the issue if that's something that we're interested? In? And if not, then we need to go in another direction. Okay. I'm, I'm just trying to trying to speed things up sure. because of the time factor. That's I understand. all. M Mr. Mitchell, you had a... No, I, I, I guess it was point of order because it's not an agenda topic. I'm well, well it, but, it but it is. It's relative to the Attorney General's opinion. But when Peg right. asked to talk about it, we kept it to the... Yeah. Yeah. I think we're all right. It's, there's no yeah, motion no, you're, here. You're right. Yeah. Um, okay. Anyway, all right. So I will. What? Yes, ma'am. We, we didn't have a motion well, that, to discuss this, but I, I agree it's, with it's you. It's where it says it right there. That it's, you know, the a, in the AG's opinion regarding giving the property. So, you know, meeting with the school board is, in re, is relative to that issue. Exactly. Yeah. And I'm, I'm in agreement with that. But we didn't have a motion to talk about any of this. We talked about deferring the thing about. Well, we talked about it, but he called on me, and I deferred before anybody had a chance to talk. <laughs> I'm sorry. All right. Ms. Kendrick. Um, as I appreciate it, the school board has been told by their council that they would not be permitted to do this. So I don't think that they would even bother with putting it on the agenda unless they're disabused. Sure. Speculation. That opinion. And, and also, I think, uh, entering into such conversations also presumes that this council is interested in that alternative. And I personally am not. I can't speak for the rest of the council, but I think before we express an interest on the part of the council, the council needs to discuss that and come to a, a group decision. Mickey? Interest of the council is in regards to this is yet another place we can look at. Whether it's what we want, whether it's what we get is the material, right now we are looking at every available possibility and this is one of them. And I pointed out the last meeting that precedent has been set in regards to cities giving school property over, or school boards giving property over to cities. It's been few and far between, but it is there, and somebody should be able to Google it, which I don't know how to do that well. And find point of order. I, I'm, I'm a little confused here. I thought we had a discussion on the North lease, the AG's opinion. We had, we held a vote. We had discussion. The vote ended. It, I thought that ended that discussion, and now we're all of a sudden we're off in, in, in a discussion that's expanding it. And I thought we voted and ended it. I didn't know we went into another discussion. I'm a little confused. Well, I think in, in part of it it's my fault. Uh, it's a combination when we listed this uh, on an update on the lease and the AG's opinion regarding giving the property. Um, so I think technically you're correct. It's not on the agenda. So well, I, I'm going to make one final okay. statement regarding this, and, and that is it's, it's pointless for us to make a decision unless it's something that's presented to us as a viable offer. And the Attorney General's opinion means nothing without the school board endorsing it. So I don't think there's any particular reason why it shouldn't be presented to them and say, you know, or to get it on their agenda to... If, if they want to do it or not, you know, in relation, and depending yeah. on the 
Attorney General's opinion is all I have to say. I understand. But uh, I think at this point in time, we're, we've already tabled this discussion. So um, that brings us to the new meeting, new business, uh, the second meeting, uh, financial Actually, summary. Oh, go ahead. You didn't take, I don't think you took a vote. Oh, to, 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 to You're actually, uh, thank you. Well, the only motion was to delay discussion of Norris until a copy of the release, uh, of the lease is provided. There was no motion regarding the school property. But don't we need to No, but we need, we've got motion? the motion, wasn't there a motion to, there's a motion and a second defer. to defer. Yes. And, and that's what, no, we, and didn't. we did have a roll call. That no, was about call. delaying until a copy of the North Street lease yes. can be obtained. That's the only motion. And, and we didn't vote on that. We didn't vote on that. We did vote on that. Oh, we did? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. We voted on that. I see. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, we didn't and take a roll call. Oh, okay. Did we? I'm sorry. I, I missed the vote. It would be an extraordinary motion. To be delaying would be an extraordinary mm -hmm. motion? Tabling it. <laughs> okay. Okay. So we had, it, we had a vo vote, a voice vote, but we need a roll call on tabling this motion to, uh, to defer discussion on the lease and until a copy of the North Street lease is obtained yes thank you okay and now we'll have a roll call now a roll call thanks Tim okay. keep us on task Mr. McClung yes Mr. Thomas yes Ms. Adamson yes Ms. Kendrick yes Ms. Schneider yes Mr. Mitchell. Six zero. Okay. Uh, now then, uh, going on to the new business. Uh, second uh, quarter or second uh, second meeting, the monthly financial. So, uh, we had our meeting with our financial workshops. Where's my thing? There it is. Uh, earlier with the budget workshop, uh, and we had. Um, Overall, we are uh, three quarters of the way through our budget year, uh, and again, you know, the, our revenues are showing uh, we're at 67 percent, and the good news is our expenses are 63 percent, almost 64 percent. So we're still holding our our budget uh, our budget revenues uh, are not meeting our expect expected budget uh, however our revenues or our expenses pardon me are still down below our revenues so we're still showing a positive number <coughs> in our in our budget uh, and actually we have a uh, right now five hundred and fourteen thousand dollars in the black uh, but out of that too we have um, part of our fund 80 and our, our transit uh, actually, everything our farm and pension fund is is uh, in the red, and along with our general capital and our lofty, uh, but everything else is showing a positive sign, which is a very good significant. <coughs> and as as noted uh, in our budget workshop, I think this is contributing <coughs> can be contributed to several different areas. But one is that the uh, city council in doing their budget last year uh, budgeted very conservatively and also that we've been having a, uh, our uh, cost uh, has been held down by our department heads so I think they're all doing a good job of, of keeping the cost down on through there uh, compared to our revenues so I didn't get a motion to discuss but anyway <laughs> I've discussed it as it is. You're done. <laughs> anyway, any discussion? <laughs> All right. Uh, I will get a note. Uh, ask for a motion to uh, discuss third quarter financials. <laughs> so moved. And a second. Get a second. Second. <laughs> okay. Right. And Madam Clerk. <coughs> Okay, there are printouts here of the payroll, the check register, and the receipts for the first uh, through September, and the 
bank balances and the debt service are on well the debt service is on the front page of the summary that was reviewed mm. during the budget workshop and the last page the bank balances is the fifth element of the quarterly report and they'll be available for your perusal all right any so comments okay uh, that uh, brings us to our agenda setting. Anybody? Anything? There are not being any except for what uh, has been noted. Uh, City Council comments. We'll start with Mr. Mitchell. Well, I'll kick it off for a while. So I do not have any. <laughs> I have none. Well, I always do. These flowers, this is also autumn splendor, is for the mayor. Oh, is your birthday you. coming up soon? I do have a birthday. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> there you go. Um, I also wanted to thank Mrs. Beard and her son for coming tonight um, and sitting through this because it's difficult. The issue is difficult, but I'm really glad you're here. Um, my friend Ruth and dog Lulu are here from Colorado, and I wanted to say thank you for them being at Leatherwood. They've been having a ball, and it's been really, really nice out there. So I thank the uh, Justin and the Parks crew for uh, taking really good care of her. Um, and that's it. Thank you. Okay. Bob, Mr. Thomas? No comments. Mr. McClellan? No comments. Mickey? Just a real quickie. Thank you, Mel. Can leave. Better late than never. <laughs> Better flat than not at all. She finally sent me my koala bear. <laughs> um, just wanted to announce for the locals that my youngest son, Jeremy, will be here for two weeks starting November 6th. Uh, primarily to spread his father's ashes, but also to celebrate Veterans Time with us. So anybody who wants to see him, give me a holler and be trying to have a huge picnic. And thirdly, I second what Peg said to Mrs. Beard and Son. That's it. All right. Um, as far as comments from the mayor, we've got a reminder to those who uh, who watch the televised city meetings on Channel 21. The uh, delayed broadcast schedule, oh. uh, city council meetings will be delayed uh, broadcast at noon and 6 p.m. the next day as well as noon on Saturday and 3 p.m. on Sunday following the meetings. Uh, our broadcast commission meetings will be replayed the next day at noon and at 6 p.m. For events we got coming up, we have a lot of events coming up. Uh, October 27th, we have the Outback in the Ozarks from 6.30 to 11.30. Uh, at various places from Derry Hollow, uh, Grand, down to Rockhouse Road. Uh, on the 27th, also, we have the Mini Poop, Mini Pooper, Mini Cooper, <laughs> Mini Cooper Parade <laughs> at 4 p.m. Uh, they start at the Passion Play and they'll go down uh, Hillside and then Spring Street and then uh, up Planer Hill and then to the end of the Ozarks. Um, and one of my favorite presentations is the Voices of Silent City. It's going to be presented again October 27th and 28th from 5.30 to 8.30 p.m. at Eurek Spring Cemetery. If you've not had an opportunity to go out and see it, please do. It's really uh, good this year. They have a lot of, of uh, great characters, great actors, and a lot of people that you've heard about. And this will be an act, a time that you'll be able to, to meet them in person. Uh, and then also on the 28th, we got the Dancing in the Park um, Thriller from noon to 2 p.m. Uh, and then on the 28th, we have the Zombie Crawl starting at 6 p.m. That's is going to go from the library down Spring Street to Basin Park. Now also on the 28th, we have the Halloween Spooktacular out at Turpentine Creek. Uh, and that's always a lot of fun out there, too. And then also on the 28th at 8.30 at the auditorium, we're going to have Intrigue Theater Halloween show. And here's an, an oldie that uh, for those who have never seen, on November the 2nd begins a folk festival. At 6 p.m. at uh, The Odd, we're going to have the Head Choppers, uh, which is a group of young kids square dancing. Uh, mm -hmm. And so this is always going to be, this is something they used to do every year. And then on 
November the 3rd, the next day, in a headliner act, Lucinda Williams. She's going to be playing at the auditorium at 7.30. And then that night at 10 p.m., they're going to have the Barefoot Ball up the top of the Basin Park Hotel. Uh, and then the uh, 4th, November the 4th, will be Diversity Week again. Uh, although I guess that's going to start probably on the 2nd through the 4th. Uh, from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. in the Basin Park. And then the, on November the 4th, we'll have the folk music uh, after 1 p.m. in Basin Park. And then, as we heard earlier, uh, we'll have the diversity film premiere at 3 p.m. upstairs at the Grotto. And also that same evening, November the 4th, we'll have drumming in the park from 6 to 8. And then on the 11th, November 9th through the 12th, uh, food and wine weekend. Uh, we'll have local chefs pairing their signature dishes with the perfect wine. And then on the 11th, we'll have Veterans Day, 10 a.m., mm. starting at the library, going down Spring Street. And then also at 1 p.m., we'll have the Porsche Parade, starting at the end of the Ozarks and going down around through Spring Street. So we've got a lot of things going on in uh, the rest of this month in November. So that's it. If we get a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you all.